Taitambo, located in Peru, was a significant Incan administrative, religious, and military hub, known for its massive architectural constructions and unique urban planning in the Cusco region. During the Spanish invasion, the Olantaytambo Sanctuary was a defensive checkpoint for Manco Inca, the Inca resistance leader against the Spanish. Today, Olantaytambo is a popular tourist destination. It was considered the most important town during the Inca era and a key site in the sacred valley of the Incas. It also acts as the main gateway to the majestic citadel of Machu Picchu. Olantaytambo traces its origins to the pre-Inca era, with the Tampas initially inhabiting it. They settled on the slopes of Bandolista Hill and formed a small kingdom. In the 15th century, the Inca Pachactec conquered and rebuilt Olantaytambo as a new planned city, constructing terraces for various purposes, including irrigation systems. This made it look like temple hills and linked it with the Inca nobility. During the Spanish conquest, Olantaytambo became the temporary capital of Manco Inca, the leader of the Inca resistance. Under his rule, Manco Inca fortified the city and its surroundings with strongholds. The Inca army halted and defeated the Spanish cavalry in the Battle of Olantaytambo in January 1537, achieving victory. Afterward, Manco Inca retreated to the dense forests of the Vilcabamba jungle to seek refuge. Olantaymbo originates from the Aymara term Ulatawi, meaning high observation place. The Quechua then adapted it as Olante or Ulantaytampu, pronounced as Tambo. According to the Quechua, Olantay Tambo comes from the 8th century drama Olantay, featuring the general Olantay, where Tambo means resting place. Olantay Tambo is 75 km northeast of Cusco, in the Urubamba province, Cusco, Peru. The altitude of Olantay Tambo is 2,800 meters above sea level, between the valleys of the Urubamba and Patacancha rivers. Olantay Tambo was an administrative center of the Inca Empire, considered a fortress for its imposing monuments. The Incas constructed massive architectural buildings in Olantay Tambo, showcasing unique urban planning in the region. The walls are finely crafted, displaying the Inca builder's skill. At its peak, it was a well-structured and organized city, composed of urban sectors, palaces, temples, observation points, terraces, platforms, and storage areas known as colcas. The Olantay Tambo ruins offer a stunning spectacle of natural and cultural landscapes. Its distribution and urban planning reveal a segmentation into various sectors, each worth visiting and exploring. The carved rock in Olantay Tambo, known as the place where the sun is tied, functioned as an astronomical calendar or sundial during the Inca era. It is marked by solstices, equinoxes, and agricultural cycles, and serves as a point of connection between the earthly and the spiritual. These rhyolite stone monoliths display Andean symbols and designs, such as felines and the Chacana, representing the Inca tripartition among the three worlds, Hananpacha, Kepacha, and Ukupacha. This sector was likely intended to construct the empire's largest temple to the sun, although it still needed to be completed. To the north of the Mañay Raque Plaza in Olitambo, hydraulic fountains flow from the melting snow to the fortress. This site stands out for its alignment with the sun, especially visible during the winter solstice, known as Inti Raimi, when it receives the first ray of sunlight. This water fountain features three outlets carved inside, known as liturgical fountains, a feature commonly found in the major cities of the Inca Empire. Research suggests this was the exclusive place where the Nusta, or Inca princess, bathed. The sacred hill along the Patacancha River is notable for its storage systems, which are called colcas. These comprise three rectangular enclosures built with slate stone and bonded with mud mortar. They are in a high area far from the town and provide good ventilation and lighting. The colcas illustrate the Inca state's economy and capacity to store critical products. Olantaytambo stands out for its vast agricultural system, from the Patacancha River to the Vilcanota River, where the Incas used advanced cultivation techniques to build terraces. 
These structures, visible from afar, form an impressive network throughout the valley, demonstrating Inca control over nature and terrain topography. The underground water sources of Olantaytambo, coming from the Patacancha River, run throughout the Inca fortress, protected by stone slabs. Their primary function is to supply and drain water for the irrigation of crop fields, acting as irrigation systems. Still in use in the town, these sources represent a legacy of Inca planning. In the Incan Empire, Olantaytambo was more than just a town or fortress. It was a symbol of power and resistance. As a royal estate, it showed off the grandeur of the Incan civilization through its sophisticated architecture and engineering. As a stronghold, it showed how brave and strong the Incas were when they were attacked from outside their country. The Incas also gave the town a lot of religious and ceremonial importance. The fortress was both a military building and a place of worship. The Sun Temple is one of the best examples of Incan stonework. It is an unfinished building on the upper terraces of the fortress. It is thought that the temple was dedicated to Inti, the Incan sun god, and was used for important religious ceremonies. Olantaytambo was a key part of the Incan Empire as a whole. It was part of a network of roads and trails that connected far-flung parts of the empire. It was a place for travelers and messengers to rest and get supplies. Olantaytambo is known as a major administrative, agricultural, and religious center, but no one knows what its main purpose was. Some archaeologists say it was a military fortress, while others say it was a temple or a royal estate. Even after a lot of research, people still disagree about what Olantaytambo's main purpose was. There are a lot of buildings in Olantaytambo that look like they were never finished. This is another interesting thing about the town. Why the Incas stopped doing their work is still a mystery. Some people say it was because the Spanish took over, but this is just a guess and does not give a clear answer. Olantaytambo is also interesting because it has a complex system of channels, fountains and waterworks that show a high level of hydraulics knowledge. Given when it was built, the water system's complexity continues to surprise scholars and tourists alike. Due to these mysteries, Olantaytambo is a fascinating place for both archaeologists and tourists. It shows how advanced the Inca civilization was and how it mysteriously fell apart. As you walk through the ruins of Olantaytambo, you will feel like you are in a grand world from the past. With its impressive terraces and walls, the fortress is a sight to behold. As you make your way up the steep steps, take a moment to look down at the town and the sacred valley. Do not miss the chance to see the Sun Temple, even though it is not finished. The massive, intricately carved stones of the temple show how good the Incan stonemasons were. The Temple of the Condor is also worth seeing. It is a rock formation that looks like a condor flying. Pay attention to the water channels as you walk through the town's cobblestone streets. These channels are part of the town's old water distribution system, which shows how much the Incas knew about water flow. Even though it was built long ago, Olantaytambo is not a deserted ruin. It is a thriving town where the past and the present coexist in peace. The layout of the town has not changed much since the time of the Incas. This gives us a unique look at how the ancient people planned cities. Today, Olantaytambo is a popular tourist destination. Its rich history and lively culture attract people from all over the world. The town is where the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu begins, and anyone interested in Peruvian history and culture should go there. Even though there are a lot of tourists, the town has managed to keep its traditional charm. The people who live there, who are called Quechua, still follow the customs and traditions of their ancestors. As you walk around Olantaytambo, you will see Quechua women dressed in traditional clothes, houses with thatched roofs, and ox-drawn carts plowing fields.